you know, try it out. That was 10 years ago. And there were so many good things that came out of it, but we continue to have bad things happen. Safety doesn't stop, you know, once you go home off after a fire. There's still work that's got to be done. And I think if we were to develop a full safety culture in our, in our while in uh, fire community, we need to address the rest of the time that we work. The effects of severe long-term drought and, and climate change. Um, the, the, the physical fire environment has changed dramatically uh, in the last 15 years. And uh, we just, the environment that firefighters operate in is totally different than it used to be. For a long time we talked about fuels and, and that was addressed in TriData. Now then we're talking about global warming on top of fuels. Um, and it's just hard to maintain focus. Uh, I do know that the combination of climate change, uh, land use changes, uh, land management changes, we now are looking at fuel situations and fire potential that's vastly different from what we were in 1958 when I first shouldered a pack. A uh, very different situation. And, uh, you know, the ramifications of those are huge, huge operationally. Mega fires was just a, an idea about the time this project was um, going on and now we have mega fires almost every year somewhere. Uh, another one is, is getting more militia involvement in the fire program. We, we've really struggled with that. Uh, you know one of the main goals of Tridata was to get more involvement from non-fire personnel or we refer to them as the militia and we've seen a, an actual decline there. I think the proliferation of, of the wildland interface and the inability to get all the players uh, who need to be at the table to resolve that problem to come to the table. No, I see that happening. I mean, uh, lots, of, lots of accounts of where they are bringing everybody together and they're coming up with some very good solutions, very workable solutions. And it's only time until we bear the, see the fruits that are born from that. And, uh, Everybody likes success, and, then, and people will emulate those situations, hopefully, and uh, you know, success will multiply greatly. And, uh, I, I guess I would say that we're not recognizing the fact that uh, you know we have. Twenty years ago, you, you had way more people applying for our work and staying with us. Retention? That's only gotten worse. Uh, I mean, and there's been a lot of work done on it, but the retention issues are as important today as they were 10 years ago and probably more so. Second, and in some quarters, we simply lack the strategic human resources plan for filling the pipeline with new talent. There's work to do in this one. In early February, we heard that the Forest Service has some 4,300 firefighters eligible for retirement. Succession planning, or the lack thereof, is a critical need, from unit firefighters to staffing incident management teams. There's just so much going on that it's hard to, to link it back. And unless somebody's focused on that and saying, this came from Tridata, or this is recommended from Tridata, or this is why we're doing it, it's easy to lose sight. Um, the SAFE program, the Safety Awareness in the Fire Environment program, um, we lost the, the impetus, the central focus, centralized focus on the SAFE program and implementation of, of all the Tridata um, recommendations. I think that the management of our fire organizations is still it's still hit and miss, and I think that, you know, the people at the top, we struggle to understand what our priorities should be, and I think that the rest of the fire world suffers because of it. I think that a lot of things are still there today that were there 10 years ago, but I think that our world's probably more complex now. They assigned somebody to kind of be the, the bird dog for this for about two years, that position sunsetted, and it just kind of, the energy behind this all these recommendations just kind of dissipated and so I think 
there was a lot of enthusiasm at first, and then it just kind of went in too many directions and without any kind of somebody in charge to focus it. You know, I think one thing that the Tri-Data study missed almost completely had, has to do with um, driving safety. That, uh, you know, there's a lot of emphasis in that study on entrapment avoidance and um, treating injured firefighters and, and those types of things. And those are important, but that's not the only way that firefighters are killed or injured. And, um, so that driving safety and, and figuring out ways to deal with our, our really high level of exposure to driving um, and as much time as we spend on the road, and a lot of times not very good roads and not very good conditions, um, that was sort of missed in the, in the study, and we need to put some more emphasis on that. Smart cards, there's one that was never, never acted on at all as far as I'm aware. Um, while we keep trying to make changes in how we do serious accident investigations, I think the fundamental problem is that agencies cannot really investigate themselves. I would like to see the accident investigation process done more like it was perceived, you know, 10 years ago. Uh, the focusing on on the what and not the who, and I think uh, some of the things that have happened, uh, you know, in, in uh, like the 30 mile fire now resulted in some very undesirable outcomes for the wildland fire profession, for the individuals in the profession, and for the public whom the profession serves. Uh, we will be prevented from getting lessons learned if we have to be concerned about prosecution and, and you know, being displayed and splayed out uh, in the public uh, for telling the truth about what was going on. If we're fighting fires correctly, we're fighting fire safely.